Mr. Bodek. God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assemble, and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. In case of an emergency, we're going to use the doors in the rear. Everybody will walk out calmly down the steps and to the outside away from the building. Any member of the public wishing to speak during the public comment session at the end of the meeting, please sign in on the white sheets right here in front of me. Anybody with a cell phone, turn them off. You need to talk, step outside. Mr. Bode, can you please call the roll? One second, sir. Mrs. Ormond. She's excused. Javik. Here. Brown. Here. Mohammed. I don't know. She was She's excused, sir. Excused. Ms. Cosby. Present. Roman. Here. Strano. Here. Yamakaitis. Here. Medina. Here. Hickey. Here. Mr. Alvarez. I'm right here. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the June 19th, 2018 regular meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes of June 19th and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Javik. Yes. Brown. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Uh, Mayor, we have a presentation. You, would you like to come to the front, please? Is anybody here from the 9-11 Foundation? No, sir. All right, we have a proclamation uh, it's for the 9-11 um, Foundation. It reads as follows. Um, whereas on Tuesday, September 11, 2001, an Islamic terrorist group by the name of Al-Qaeda carried out a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks. And whereas the attacks of September 11, 2001 changed our world forever, and the state of New Jersey was greatly impacted by the tragedies that occurred on that date. And whereas the heroics of the members of the many fire police and other emergency agencies who acted courageously to protect and serve should never be forgotten. Whereas in October 2001, America's 911 Foundation, Inc. was established to fund a college scholarship program for children of active first responders, EMS, fire, and police, who each day placed their lives on the line for all of us. And whereas the foundation also assists emergency organizations with funds, materials, equipment, or volunteers when needed. And whereas the foundation has sponsored an annual memorial ride in August to help raise funds in support of this worthy cause. And whereas on Saturday, August 18th, 2018, the memorial ride will be stopping at Aviation Plaza in Linden, New Jersey for its 15th and final ride. And whereas the mayor wishes to commend the foundation for their worthy efforts and encourage support for the mission of the foundation for the past 15 years. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Derek Armstead, mayor of the city of Linden and the state of New Jersey, do hereby declare this third Saturday, August 18th, 2018, <coughs> recognize that America's 911 Foundation for their selfless efforts in support of our first responders and their families and for contributing generously to the same, and that, and that we commend the participants of the 9-11 ride and America's 9-11 Foundation for honoring those who have served us all so well and remembering us that we never forget. Signed by me, Derek Arms at Mayor City of Linden. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're going to start with ordinance and hearing. 
Mr. Bodek, can you please start with 6244? In ordinance creating a new chapter in the code of the city of Lynn entitled Business Hours. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Has any written communication received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? In that case, may I have a motion, please? Council President, I move ordinance 6244 for adoption and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Border, can you please read 6245? An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2, administration of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23, 1999, and approved November 24, 1999, and is amended and supplemented. 2-12, Department of Police, delete Section 2-12.12, Special Law Enforcement Officers, add Section 2 Point twelve point twelve special law enforcement officers. Has the ordinance been <laughs> properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Can uh, want to be heard? Hey, my name is Craig Haller, one hundred and twenty Donaldson Place. Uh, what is a special law enforcement officer? And what are their salaries, the cost of benefits, and what are their duties? And why do we need them? Uh, yes, Mr. Antonelli. Thank you, Council President. Uh, sir, uh, the special law enforcement officers are obviously not a, a fully authorized officer that uh, has all the powers uh, of arrest, et cetera. But uh, there's different types of classes of special law enforcement officers. For example, depending upon the class, they help out with traffic detail. Sometimes there's an accident. There's certain things that could be done. Specifically as to this ordinance, what we're doing this evening, uh, if it passes, uh, legislation was passed not too long ago creating a new class of special law enforcement officers who are retired officers that could do security at schools. So this governing body has been proactive along with the mayor uh, in its attempts to address certain issues that have been uh, taking place throughout the country related to, uh, unfortunately, school shootings. Uh, so this ordinance and what we're proposing to do here will allow uh, the city as well as the Board of Ed to uh, um, come to terms on a shared services agreement to allow retired law enforcement officers to be posted at the schools in the city of Linden to obviously ensure uh, not only the children who attend, but the teachers and then visitors uh, to ensure their safety at the schools. Uh, I could uh, tell you right now that that's a, that's a work in progress. Um, there are discussions with the Board of Ed that I'm not at liberty to disclose right now, but the uh, Board of Ed would be um, uh, taking on the lion's share, if you will, uh, the cost to do that. Um, and uh, right now we are internally going over numbers uh, to obviously, as you indicated, to indicate what the cost of each officer would be. But that's something that's in discussion. At some future point, we will be presenting a shared services agreement where we'll have those specific numbers. Anybody else? May I have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to move that ordinance number 62-45. Uh, hearing be closed, the ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Border, can you please read 62-46? Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $77,000 for citywide curb and sidewalk recon reconstruction for and by the City of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $73,150 bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. 
Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Uh, Council President, I move to close the public hearing of ordinance number 6246. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Porter, can you please read 6247? Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $165,000 for acquisition of playground equipment and renovation for various parks for and by the City of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $85,500 bonds or notes of the City for financing part of the appropriation. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. May I have a motion, please? Uh, Council President, I move to close the public hearing of ordinance number 6247. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Porter, can you please read 6248? An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance establishing a schedule of titles, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the City of Linden passed August 15, 1995 and approved August 16, 1995, adding Schedule 4-MM-6. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I, I move that the hearing for ordinance number 62-48 be closed. The ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Buddha, can you please read 6248? An ordinance adopting an amended redevelopment plan for the park plastic site, initially governing the redevelopment of block 496, lot 3, to include block 496, lot 4, on the tax maps of the city, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, NJSA 48 colon 12A-1 at sequence. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move that the hearing be closed and Ordinance 6249 be adopted and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Buda, can you please read 6250? An, or, an ordinance to adopt the redevelopment plan entitled 1001 West Elizabeth Avenue Redevelopment Plan, Block 423, Lot 4.02, pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 40A, colon 12A-1 at sequence. Has the uh, ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move that the hearing for Ordinance 62-51 be closed. The ordinance adopted and I request a second. Second. Uh, hold on a minute. Is it 6250? 6250. Yeah. yeah, Council President? Yes. Okay, so um, I move to close the public hearing of number 6250. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Apura, can you please read 6251? Count Council President, if I just may interrupt. Uh, Mr. Poles is here. I believe this ordinance, uh, when it was referred to the planning board, they, was this the, uh, the redevelopment where they had some issues with it? There's supposed to be some comments by 
at least one member of council on the record they indicate that although the planning board has rejected certain of their um, proposals uh, this governing body still feels it's uh, in the best interest of the city to proceed with the ordinance notwithstanding the planning board's I guess non recommendation that's right you did mention that is there anybody in the dais that wants to make um, a comment Councilman Brown Mr. Polis, is there a statement necessary for this? Yeah, can you please come out to the podium? I'm sorry. To so the that, would focus so that the people at home can hear you. Right. Press the button. There you go. Sorry, everyone. Um, so previously, there was a redevelopment plan. Certain comments came back from the planning board, which were accepted in part and rejected in part by the city council. In this instance, um, there were no such comments provided by the planning board for its reasoning as to why it declined to recommend the redevelopment plan to this council. However, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, this council, as is in its purview and which it has just done, can approve the redevelopment plan by a um, majority of its convened council. So in essence, there's 11 members of the council. It could go forward with six affirmative votes. This evening, there's nine affirmative votes. Um, there were no specific comments from the planning board that it needed to be addressed. So opining on a legal position, I believe what the council has proceeded to do is um, adequate under the local redevelopment and housing law. And um, I thank Mr. Antonelli for bringing it to the council's attention and I apologize for not um, piping up earlier. Okay, uh, thank you. Just to play it safe, Councilman Roman, you want to? You sure? Okay, then in that case, anybody else, Mr. Principato? Oh, hold on a minute. Yeah, we voted already. Uh, yeah, sorry, we already voted on it. Mr. Porter, can you please read 6251? An ordinance to adopt the Avenue C redevelopment plan concerning block 580, lot 13 and 14 on the tax map of the city of Linden pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, NJSA 48 colon 12A-1 at sequence. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody wish to be heard on this ordinance? John Principato, 1706 Westover Road. What exactly is the Avenue C redevelopment plan entail? Mr. Pauls, can you please come up to the microphone? Evening, and I apologize for not introducing myself uh, to the members of the public. James Pauls from Manaman Scotland Bauman Redevelopment Council to the City of Linden. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, so in general, ladies and, or excuse me, council members, the Avenue C redevelopment plan, uh, what we're calling it, encompasses block 580, lots 13 and 14, but what might be more generally known as the old Walmart site. Um, currently there's interest from uh, property owners uh, of the block 580, lots 13 and 14, um, to do perhaps some type of um, mixed retail on the frontage with perhaps some um, warehouse space or other similar uses um, on the rear of these parcels. 
as opposed to some other um, redevelopment plans that have come before the council this evening where there's a definitive plan in place and a redeveloper that's ready to put shovels in the ground. Um, this was more of a preliminary and comfort feel um, for the property owner to give a little bit of flexibility, maybe to market to um, interested tenants that might be looking to come on and, and, and come in and build or, or come into space that might already be available to it. Um, there's no, just so the council's aware, there's no redevelopment agreement or financial agreement uh, contemplated for this plan as it currently stands. This is basically a vehicle for the city of Linden um, <coughs> as an enticement for maybe a developer or somebody else who might be interested to see what the city is looking forward. Um, there's general, uh, we worked with Paul Rickey, the city's planner, um, to get general concepts that might work best in this area. Um, and we believe this is a, uh, a worthwhile piece of legislation and redevelopment plan for the city council to consider this evening for this area. Thank you, sir. Did you answer? Uh, yeah. I, is, is it going to be rezoned? Oh, we don't know that. This is just the beginning, the okay. first steps. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move that the hearing for Ordinance 6251 be closed. The ordinance adopted and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Porter, can you please read 6252? An ordinance approving the application for a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with PR2 GAR Tremley Point Property 2 Urban Renewal LLC. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard? Please come on, Ms. Wolverdine. Diane Wolverding, Sixth Ward. Uh, I am all for redevelopment because that's supposed to help us with our taxes, but I get nervous when I read long-term tax exemption, and it's for this one and the next one. Can I have a little explanation on how long-term we're talking? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Pauls, can you please come up? Mm -hmm. Might as well stay here. It's two separate places. <laughs> Might as well stay here, but I'm hoping that I won't be needed eventually. But, <laughs> um, Mayor and Council, uh, ma'am. So, and we can take them in tandem. Although I know separate action is required on each ordinance, but basically, these next two financial agreements are 30-year financial agreements. Um, this is was formally before the council, and the council did previously approve about a year or two ago a financial agreement for one specific area in the Trimley Point area. Um, if you've been following along with several council meetings or maybe you've heard that that area is under control by a private um, entity that's looking to redevelop the whole Tremley Point area into um, approximately eight warehouse spaces uh -huh. um, that will be over four million square feet of warehouse. Uh, so in so doing and in order to make the project viable, um, the redeveloper has requested and the city's financial uh, analyst, NW Financial, have crunched the numbers in the pro forma, which ranges from everything from building costs through what the developer thinks they will get eventually at the end of the day with rent on a per square foot basis, and have determined that um, a financial agreement or financial agreements are appropriate for the council to consider and even approve should it so be uh, the governing body's wish, and that there will be step ups in the um, annual service charge, which is based on the annual gross revenue of the project. So each project will be 30 years. There will be for 10 years of each agreement, um, the annual, there will be a collection of 10 and a half percent of annual gross revenue of each project for the first 10 years. That the city gets? Yes, that the city gets under the current Yes, under the current structure of the long-term tax exemption law, 95% comes to the city, 5% goes to the county, and there's also a 2% administrative fee that's collected by the city. For the first 10 years, it will be 10.5% of annual gross revenue. The 
second 10 years or years 11 through 20 would be 12 and a half percent annual gross revenue and the years 21 through 30 would be 14 and a half percent annual gross revenue. Also of note, and this is in conjunction with, um, which came before the governing body, I believe two months ago and was approved, is with um, complete um, private investment, a bridge that actually, if you're familiar with the area, there's was an old roadway or um, train service line that ran through that basically made the land that's now going to be developed undevelopable because nobody had the property rights to property on either side of the train tracks. Um, two months ago, that has also been bought by this joint venture that's going to develop all the warehouses. Um, and the council approved, I believe, two months ago, a developer's agreement um, to govern the construction of a raised roadway built 100% by private funds in order to make this Tremley Point parcel accessible um, to the redeveloper who will redevelop it into eight warehouses. Isn't there talk about some access road? Wouldn't that be in that area too? Off of the turnpike so the trucks aren't coming down my street? That is, and uh, I don't think we're getting too far over our skis to contemplate that, but that has been a constant consideration and discussion. Um, it's as the council members can probably speak to better than I can, it's been a long time coming just to get this far and to have private dollars come into the area to build the raised roadway on its own and then have a, a concept for the warehouses. And I don't think I'm giving too much away when I say internally the city has been discussing options and it's, and it's on the radar of the city to, whether it's approaching NJDOT or whatever else the city has to do in order to make, um, you know, in ingress and egress even even better and um, you know make the project even more viable for the city is there still property in that area for when eventually they do the access road or, or are these warehouses going to be on that area no I don't I do not believe the warehouses will totally subsume the property area I do believe there is adjacent areas where it's contemplated that an access roadway could be um, constructed well, I still get nervous when I hear of tax exemptions. I know uh, Councilman Brown mentioned when the apartments at the end or the condos, no, that big building at the end for uh, you know people to live in and use the train station had talked about that you know tax exemptions are not always good for the city. So that makes me nervous. And we really should be looking out more for the taxpayer. So it makes me nervous that we're giving away a lot to a developer. And yes, we need that area developed. But like you, like Councilman Brown had explained with that building, that you know could have gotten a better deal. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Make up a motion, please. Oh, Councilman. All right. So yes, you have a very valid point. I think. That was a couple of years ago. It was according to the Metro report with pilot programs. I think we go by a case by case scenario when we talk about doing pilot programs. And what we brought me what brought me over as far as seeing the benefits is that I think 95% elects. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe of the revenue goes towards the municipality, and the object of a pilot program is to bring in revenue to the city, but then also to get a redevelopment project started. The reason why they are 30 years is that banks. When they go to finance these projects that are multi-million dollar projects, they need to see some type of stability in the payments and expenses that are going out. Um, what really convinced me to go over this, to look at a case by case, is Woodbridge, for example. John McCormick, the mayor of Woodbridge, is a good friend of Mayor Armstead and myself, talked to us about the benefits of pilot programs and how it's helped Woodbridge um, with their um, stabilizing their tax base and things like this. And John McCormick is a former treasurer of the state, and so he saw benefits in his town. And I think that's what's really driven some of these pilot programs you've seen is the economic growth that has brought down uh, that has been brought to the town. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, at Kaminsky Maple Avenue. Yes, yeah, so I definitely agree, and I um, with the last speaker. I think at the end of the day, these are schemes. Um, and one entity is basically, seems to me, is screwing another. And at the end of the day, I don't know what the benefit is. Uh, I understand uh, Councilman Brown's um, comments about Mr. McCormick, but 
what specifically is he referring to, right? I mean, this body and folks on this body have constantly reminded us, the taxpayers, how, hey, we're responsible for the municipal portion, but yet there's the county portion, Board of Ed, they're cut out of this. So someone's screwing somebody here, right? And at the end of the day, if the Board of Education is gonna be funded by tax dollars and by our tax dollars, then maybe we should make it totally transparent, clean. At the end of the day, the sales tax, I believe, was instituted to pay for education. And I know the hands are, you know, as very often they do, the hands get in the, in the pot and, and muddies things. So um, not that I'm advocating for more, paying more to the Board of Education or to the county government, but at the end of the day, it's holistic, you have to look at the big picture. So um, I would just remind folks of that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? May I have a motion, please? It's your motion. It's your motion. That's oh, it is my motion. Uh, okay, I wanna close the public hearing and move for an approval. Second. Mr. Javik. Yes. Brown. Yes. Cosby. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Porter, you threw a curveball in there. I didn't know it was my motion. Can you please read 6253? Yeah. An ordinance approving the application for a long term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with PR2 slash GAR Tremley uh, Property 3 Urban Renewal LLC. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Does anybody want to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move that the hearing for ordinance 6253 be closed. The ordinance adopted, I request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Buda, can you please read 6254? An ordinance amending the Infinium Redevelopment Project Redevelopment Plan to the Planning Board uh, for review and comment pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 40A colon 12A at sequence. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Anybody wants to be heard on this ordinance? I have a motion, please. Council President, I move that the hearing be closed and ordinance 6254 be adopted and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Bode, can you please read 6255? <coughs> An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2, administration of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23, 1999, and approved November 24, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. 2-12, Department of Police, delete Section 2-12.1, created Department of Police, add Section 2-12. 2.12.1 created Department of Police. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communications received? No, sir. Anybody wants to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move that the uh, or a hearing for Ordinance 6255 be closed, the ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. The consent agenda. All, all items listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a Council member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Does anybody wish to remove any items? In that case, can I have a motion, please? Council President, I move the uh, consent agenda items seven, um, items one and three, through number three, request a second. Second. 
Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, we're going to move for um, reports and comments from the members of the governing body. Councilman Javik, can we start with you, sir? Certainly. Uh, well, first, I'd like to say thank you for to Alexis, Zach, our CFO, Councilman Brown, members of the Finance Committee for, the, for their dedication and perseverance in keeping our city fiscally sound. Now I'd like to read our budget review and finance statement for July 17, 2018. Approval is requested for the following finance actions. Number one, the payment of bills totaling $1,801,000. $39.31. Bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. Number two, we are in receipt of the investments made by the city treasurer for the month of June at the rate of 1%. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Continuing, my ward report tonight consists of where we are and where we're going. Uh, this week, we will be having a pre-construction uh, Thursday morning meeting to finalize the street pavings on Knopf Street, Loretta, uh, Loretta Street, and Amon Terrace. Our objective is to get this paving done before the end of the summer. Our city trees are being taken care of as fast as possible. We are doing trimming, removing dead trees and stump removal. We even have people from the Shade Tree Commission right now out there helping with the trimming. And I would like to thank them for their extra help. Uh, safety has been a continuous, well, safety has been and continues to be a primary concern in our city. In the second ward, we are adding more street lighting where needed. In the second ward, we are adding more, uh, we're working actually with the traffic department to uh, reduce speeding and accidents on the streets and handling the problems associated with commuter versus residential parking in our neighborhoods. Uh, sanitation and cleanliness are also issues associated with our Wood Ave corridor. This is why we are working on the purchase of a sidewalk sweeper to complement our downtown streetscape. In addition, you may have noticed grass coming through the uh, tree grates. Uh, we're going to put um, a fiber landscape down there to remove uh, the growth uh, after it's pulled out in this way. They're not going to come back in the future. As far as development, we have some issues with both our projects happening in the second ward where before I thought we would see the JTG scaffolding project implemented already. Uh, that has significantly changed, and now I believe that United Lacquer is going to be torn down and started first. All movement in regards to development is good for our city. Feel free to reach out to me uh, with any other issues you feel I can help resolve. I can be reached at 908-494-4608 or email me at bjavik at linden-newjersey.org. Council President, end of report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Brown? Okay. I usually, uh, I have a long list of things to go over tonight, but um, tonight, I'm not gonna go over them tonight because I actually have a personal issue that I'm gonna have to cut out of the meeting. Um, so the only report that I do wanna talk about is that we had a STEM um, program that was over at the across the street at the promenade thanks to the mayor and other members of the public where we had the Liberty Science Center come in um, what we found and what we want to do is bring them back in um, during September to remember so with the help of the mayor's youth commission and I said we're hoping that during September to remember that we can bring them back in because we saw how the great they were with the kids and bring some more activities for the kids as far as games things of this nature um, I have a whole host of other things that I would like to talk about, but I'm going to reserve those comments um, till next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Cosby. What is that? It's a telephone. Oh. She's not going to. It felt like it was weird. Okay. Uh, 
I have a short report on purpose. So from the Construction Code Committee, I don't have my glasses, so I'm just going to read the bottom. Permit fees, DCA fees, certificate fees, total of grand total of $53,054 for June 1st until June 29th. And that's from the Construction Code Committee. Our meeting is actually on Thursday, so I don't have a new report, but we're actually looking to do some things in the fifth ward, actually. There's a building that we all know about by the laundromat in the 1800 block. You can see through the building. And so that building has been put on. There's been summonses issued because it's a, a safety hazard. It looks like it's going to fall down any day now. So we're looking to condemn that, actually. So that's our committee is going to take that up, and we're going to follow up tomorrow, Thursday at the meeting, and I'll give everybody an update at next month's meeting. From the Housing Authority, as the liaison, they had their annual round tables last month, so the residents were able to come and they talk to the commissioners so that they can you know, provide any feedback to the commissioners and let them know what their concerns are for the building. So that's an update from the Housing Authority. I want you guys to save the date of August 19th. That is the annual Fifth Ward Community Cookout, and we're going to do it at Fifth Ward Park this year. Um, August 19th, that's a Sunday, so we usually do it on the third Sunday. So save the date, August 19th, we're going to be out in the Fifth Ward Park for the annual community cookout. I do want to um, actually announce with disappointment that the Wellness Wednesday series has been um, discontinued for lack of participation. So the, the nurses, and I did let the Board of Health know, the nurses did an awesome job. They were well prepared with all of their presentations. Unfortunately, I guess it's people have things that they're doing and the awarenesses that we focused on which were very important people weren't you know going to come out to them so we're going to bring our programs to you wherever you are we're going to be I'm just going to track the calendar and see who's where and what's important and then we'll just show up and give you information that way so I know there's a lot of different conflicts but either way Nancy just again expressed my thanks to the nurses they did an awesome job and uh, I appreciate their efforts but um you know, the only, there was only one council person that actually came, and that was Councilwoman Ormond. She came to the Autism Awareness, and that was in her ward, so I wanted to thank her for that. And I did thank her when she was here, but she's not here tonight, so she'll see this later. Um, I have something else. Okay, we're not going to confuse people. Right. Other than that, I have a website. It's Roshana.com, and or you can contact me at 908-718-7933 if you have any concerns. And oh, I just also want to mention that the fishing club is doing awesome this year. So our our kids are fishing, and I'm looking at Sandy. Sandy and her husband do an awesome job. Also, Jay Sabilski does an awesome job, and we're looking forward to next year when. We want to be in the budget next year so that we can have stuff for the kids and we don't have to, you know, come out of pocket and things like that. But this is our third year, and I have to say that the kids are catching, they're learning, and we're doing the anti-drug prevention, and it's an awesome thing. So I'm just grateful to have uh, the volunteers and that the city is owning the program this year. So I'm looking forward to our end of the season activities, and if anybody's interested, we're going to start our scheduling early this year so we can start our program in the fall so that the kids can fish in the fall, and then we can move into the summer and have a full season. I think that's all I have. Well, wait, give me two seconds to think about it. No, you're okay. done. Well, thank, thank you. Right. Councilman <laughs> Roman. Thank you, Council President. Is that it? Um, good evening, Linda. my committees, though. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, just to start <laughs> off, six waters. Uh, recycling <laughs> wasn't picked up today due to on unforeseen circumstances with a truck um, and the rain came in please leave it out it's, they're coming first thing in the morning um, uh, as for um, start with committee meetings landfill um, not too much change uh, we're still negotiating with Fiabilia um, regarding uh, the sale of a property over there um, and also the LEDC director got me in touch with a uh, gentleman who um, who does solar panels so we're hoping to uh, engage in good conversation with the committee and Thanks. and see if we can get that project uh, re-rolling. Um, other than that, I'm not going to bore you guys with a 
whole leachate pumps and the methane gas of the landfill down there. Uh, public properties, Director Dan uh, just took over, um, as we discussed last meeting. Uh, we had a quick meeting, um, go over his plans of the future. He's, he's uh, learning as fast as he can, and uh, he's going to continue to give the committee an update um, going forward. We discussed a couple things. Of course, I went after him on the train station pretty much immediately. Um, I'm happy to report I just heard that there was going to be a couple uh, small changes down at the train station that's hopefully going to improve maintenance um, going down there. So uh, going forward, things are going to get better at the train station. And by next year, it's my opinion, that, and, if, and I'll be there to make sure of it. It's going to be a, a totally different place um, beginning in the spring. So uh, trees, slowly but surely. We have a lot of trees, a lot of parks, and uh, I know the guys are out there working every day. Uh, PSC&G took out a very large tree on West, West Linden Avenue today. Um, there's at least three others on Linden Avenue, and I, I can think of almost a dozen more throughout the ward that need to go. So be patient. They're on the list. Um, and if you think there's a tree that's not on the list, give me a call, and I'll, I'll make sure it's on there um, if it's obviously dead. Um, tonight we passed the resolution to repave East Morris Avenue, Diane's Street, <laughs> down from Woodlawn to uh, Wood Avenue. Um, all the way to the Meridia building. Also, West Stimson is going to get paved, as well as portions of Clinton Avenue, uh, where it's real bad, right, right near Linden Avenue. Um, keep in mind, contingent with Walmart opening up Linden Avenue, as well as six other intersections have to get repaved, widened, and restriped. So even though we did Wood Avenue, or the county did Wood Avenue, and you see the side streets not looking as good as, as Wood Avenue does, within uh, the next year, or hopefully actually within the next six months, um, Walmart has to has to redo those streets, so it's it's good for us. Um, Meridia Lifestyles two continues to go up. And as you may know, they're building three floors down and three floors underground parking. So be patient, um, be patient with the intersection, especially Lindenwood Avenue. We're constantly shifting and moving things around uh, to make it safer and better for traffic, and as most importantly, the pedestrians. Uh, once school starts up, I'm, we're going to have several crossing guards out there to make sure the kids are safe. Yesterday, I attended the Linden Fire Department's last alarm memorial. Um, the LFD dedicated this absolutely beautiful um, memorial to the, actually, I had no idea this. There's eight men that lost their lives as uh, members of the Linden Fire Department over the 102-year history. And uh, Chief, is he here? Not here, he left. Yes, he's here. They, they did, uh, the, your boys did a great job. Um, it was very touching, and it was, it was an awesome sight to see. Um, as for that, that's about it. Uh, if you need anything, sidewalks, problems with trash, trees, I don't care how small the problems are, this is why you guys hired me, um, I'll be right out there. So my cell phone number is 908-494-5784. Council President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Strano? Yes, Council President, I have the confidential, personal, person, confidential and personnel report for uh, July meeting. Uh, there's seven items here. Uh, first is in the police department. <clears throat> Item A is permission to advertise for a full-time clerk one. Item B is the hiring of six full-time public safety telecommunicator trainees from the attached list. C is amending the hiring date for police recruits from July 2nd, 2018 to July 6th of 2018. D is the promotion of Charles Crane to a senior computer service technician effective July 17, 2018 at no increase in pay. Item E is accepting the resignation in good standing of Mike, Michael Martin's police recruit effective July 11th of 2018. Now item number two, A is in the Department of Community Services, the hiring of Anthony Chesney, Trenton Boyer, Stephen Quinterly, Eric Doss, Louis Florian, Michael Williams as laborer one tier two at the hourly rate of $15 per hour, effective August 1st, 2018, pending the successful completion of a pre-employment requirements. Item B is rescinding the hiring of Andrew Bison, effective uh, July 2nd, 2018. He's no longer interested in the position. C is the approval of the seasonal list. The, files on, the list is on file in the city clerk's office. 
three in the public property recreational services the hiring of Roberto Alman and Douglas Scott as laborer one tier two at the hourly rate of $15 an hour effective August 1st 2018 pending the success successful completion of the pre-employment requirements B is the approval of the seasonal list the list is on file in the city clerk's office number item four in the Treasury Department the hiring of Lucy Miranda part-time clerk one at the hourly rate of $18.98 effective August 1st 2018 pending the successful completion of pre-employment requirements item five in the Board of Health amending the hiring date of Justin Panzarella from July 2nd 2018 to July 9th of 2018 six in the personnel uh, department uh, item a is the FMLA slash NJFLA employee number 090569 from 6118 to 53019 employee number 006134 from 7118 to 63019 employee number 000958 from 7118 to 63019 employee 909223 from 7218 to 81518 employee number 909498 from 7218 to 81518 item number seven in the fire department the approval to send the fire candidates to medical and psychological examinations to obtain eight successful fire candidates I need a uh, motion a question. Uh, a oh yeah motion yeah excuse me any questions I have a comment questions I have a question so my question is for um, number one I'm gonna say the same thing and I said last month that we're hiring people or we we're posting these positions yet the policy was changed and I was told that it's too much work to publicize these positions and they're gonna keep people's um, applications on file so I want you to go to the applications on file and I need you guys to hire somebody so that they can, they can fill the vacancies and or change the policy back to what it used to be where everybody gets the notice and it's public for everybody. Oh, but the question was how come we're not um, filling them with the applications that are on file? That was well, question. your questions are duly noted. That was the question. That was your answer. Is Alan here? Is any, anybody here? Can, Mr. Bodak, can you answer that? How come we're not using the applications from the previous postings less than six months ago to fill these positions? There was one instance where we had advertised for a position in a particular department, and that department also had then a second vacancy occurred for the same title. The committee allowed at that time and only that time for the appointment from the existing list. Otherwise, the committee has been following the policy and posting each of the positions that have come up. But the policy was actually changed in writing in 2000, whatever. Alan's not here, but see, that's my concern. We, we changed it at one point to, to appease someone but now we're supposedly following the, the policy that used to exist. So I have concerns about that. We're not public, giving everybody a fair shake at these jobs. That's my only concern, and that, that's it for me. President Estrella, you ask for a motion? Yes, Council President, I uh, ask for uh, approval of request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? I'm going to abstain. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Okay, continuing on. Um, I was appointed as the uh, two council meetings ago as the um, an alternate member of the Lynn Roselle Sewage Authority, and as such, have taken on responsibility to be the liaison from the city council. Uh, I attended the last meeting, which was the June meeting. Um, there weren't any items outside of normal business items to report from that meeting. Uh, nothing substantial that uh, should have been brought to this meeting for uh, publication or advertisement. Uh, regarding the quiet zone, uh, the uh, railroad crossing on Lower Road, the saga still continues. All the construction has been completed. 
we're waiting for the New Jersey Department of Transportation Division for uh, Railroads to do their final inspection and approval so we can finally have the quiet zone activated and complied with. And I have to commend our engineering department and our fire chief as well for all the hard work that they put into the design and construction and their oversight. The project, along with the paving, the striping, the signage, really looks great. And um, in closing, I want to um, uh, wish somebody that I worked with for many years here in the city, uh, George Verchik, our city engineer, his uh, last day will be at the end of this month. And I want to wish George Verchik uh, best wishes on his retirement after a long and successful career here in Linden, as this is the last council meeting that he will be presiding as the city engineer. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Yamakaitis. Thank you, Council President. Uh, from the Mayor's Youth Commission, uh, the Mayor's Youth Commission will once again be sponsoring the annual Backpack to School on Monday, August 20th, from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Raymond Wood Bower Promenade. Last year, 800 backpacks were given away to students in Linden from grades K to 12. This year's goal is to reach 1,000 backpacks to give away to our Linden students. The Mayor's Youth Commission is working on this project in collaboration with many organizations to eliminate duplicated efforts. These organizations include the following. Uh, Communities in Co Cooperation Incorporated, the Linden Board of Education, the Linden Recreation Department, Mayor Derek Armstead and the City Council, the Police and Fire Departments, and many of our community's faith-based organizations. Donations of backpacks and school supplies are being accepted. Drop-off locations are at the Mayor's Office, which is located on the third floor of City Hall, and the JTG Center located on Helen Street. Monetary donations will be accepted. Checks can be made out to the Mayor's Youth Commission and dropped off at the Mayor's Office or mailed to the Mayor's Youth Commission, 301 Northwood Avenue, Linden. The backpack giveaway is for Linden residents only. Pre-registration is required at www.cic dash nj.org slash events. For more information, contact 908-290-3107 or email lindennjbackpack at gmail.com. This information will also be available on the city website or on the Linden Mayor's Youth Commission uh, Facebook page. There you will also be able to uh, um, access a list of supplies needed since it is for grades K to 12, so they're looking to not all get a bunch of crayons and things for younger students, but we need um, different items that are used for high school and middle school students as well. So please, if you're interested, please access that. Uh, you'll see these flyers around town for the, mayor's, for the Mayor's Youth Commission backpack to school for you. So please, we ask if you could support it. It's a great uh, benefit for our students to help them kick off the new school year. Uh, the Mayor's Youth Commission also held their project graduation bash last month. The graduates had a great time at the Edison Racquet Club. They had endless food, uh, great activities including squ swimming, sports activities, there was a DJ, they had laser tag, a photo booth, and many other activities, and a good time was had by all. I want to thank all who helped out financially to make this possible. I would be remiss if I did not say uh, a special shout out to Sandy Vasquez and Rebecca Totoli, Mike Jackson, and all the volunteers who helped to make the event such a success. They decorated the venue, um, they really put effort into it. Some of the uh, students don't have graduation parties with their family, so this year was really an extra special touch when you walked in. Um, they had pictures of every graduate that was participating with, in the bash, which made every kid feel really special. And I just want to say these volunteers go above and beyond. So it's really nice to see, and I want to say thank you to you. Okay, uh, the eighth ward report um, the yellow curbs and crosswalks are starting to be painted by the public property department and their summer youth help. So they should be done before the school year commences. Uh, paving will begin shortly on Pennsylvania Railroad Avenue uh, th in the 8th Ward. This is from state aid money, so pretty soon we'll be going out for bid for the other streets, which include uh, South Park Avenue, which is the 
strip between um, Route 1 and 9 and Linden Avenue, which is public works can't even keep up with every time it rains. We have major potholes there because it's a heavily traveled street, as well as Urbanowitz Avenue. So bids will be going out shortly. We'll have some dates for that soon. Um, as Councilman Roman had mentioned, uh, recycling was not picked up in his ward in some areas. We also had a little bit of an issue in a little section of the 8th Ward, so please leave your cans out. We had breakdowns. The department was fighting breakdowns of equipment as well as the heavy rains of this afternoon, but please leave out your uh, recycling. They will be sure to get it. Um, save the date, Saturday, August 11th at the uh, St. Mark's Dorothy Ford Park. We will have the Blanky Street and 8th Ward Community Day from 12 noon to 9 p.m. The day will include a youth basketball tournament, game trucks, food vendors, and music. We'll have more details very shortly going out to the residents. And before I conclude, I just wanna wish my congratulations to Councilman Brown and his wife, Vanessa, on the birth of their new son, Ethan Joseph Brown. God bless Councilman Brown. And that includes my, concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Medina? Yes, thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple notes, uh, so I have a small, uh, short report. Do not have a library report this month, but again, I encourage everyone just stop by the library, stop by the circulation desk, and just um, see what's happening in the library. You can get a lot of information from the circulation desk on all the events and uh, upcoming programs that they're offering at the library. Um, just wanted to update everyone, especially the Ninth Ward uh, residents, some uh, safety improvements in the Ninth Ward that I talked about in the last month report. I was surprised to see that the county um, installed or painted the shoulder lines on Raverton Road between Orchard all the way down to Wood Avenue. Uh, I was actually super excited and believe it or not, it's already making a big, big difference. People are staying in their lane, allowing folks to make it right into their driveways is really, really cleaned up that section a lot. Again, these roads are just getting more and more congested. Population is going up, and uh, we're trying to do the best we can to curb some of these traffic issues around our town. Um, also, I've received complaints on the stop sticks or delineators. They're right in front of the Dunkin' Donuts on, uh, on Wood Avenue. On the road, well, it's actually right in between, so it's between Linden and Roselle. Reached out to the county, I met with Director Joseph Gaziano on Saturday, um, those delineators have been hit by cars and not been replaced, um, I guess, in a couple of years and whatnot. So they're gonna replace the delineators and also add the three missing one that is heading towards um, Rosewood Terrace. The problem is people are coming off of Robertson Road right on that uh, yield and trying to make a left right into the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot because there are three stop, I call them stop sticks, but they're called delineators. They're missing a few delineators, so it has a nice wide opening, so people are just trying to make that quick left there versus going straight, crossing Wood Avenue, making a right. I just don't, you know, sometimes I just don't get it. And also there's a, I call it an unnamed road. People like to go to Lungwa or the liquor store or the uh, UPS store there, and they're making this illegal left, again, causing people to break hard and some uh, near misses with accidents. So we're definitely trying to improve it. We, like I said, I met with them on Saturday and uh, hopefully this week that should be improved and those delineators will be replaced and installed. Um, receiving a ton of complaints. I've been receiving this complaint for a while now. I send it over to the traffic committee, which I'm part of, um, and also to the traffic bureau. The speeding and the wrong way drivers on Burland and Ferber. Uh, you folks are not familiar with that area. That's the dead end of Northwood Avenue in Amsterdam by Cranford and Roselle. Uh, it's a nice little shortcut to get to the midsection of Raritan Road and people just fly right through and it's a nice one way wide road. So there's been tons of accidents, single vehicle accidents because they've just been crashing into parked cars and it's unfortunate because some folks have only liabilities on their vehicles and, and when it's a total loss, it's a total loss. Uh, so we're thinking of uh, A, speed humps, um, adding more signage, um, signage on the road itself, no right turns. So we're trying to be very creative to curb the issue. We just can't fix stupid, unfortunately. Um, people just are gonna behave the, one, the way they wanna behave. So we're doing the best we can and the Traffic Bureau has it um, uh, on their list and we're gonna do a study and hopefully we'll have a, a good solution for that area down there. Uh, with that being said, lastly, I did receive an email 
We do have a cutoff. I don't think anyone mentioned it up here for uh, tree planting requests. So if anyone would like a tree in front of their home, shoot me an email or call me and we can add you to the list. The cutoff is uh, on July 25th. And uh, again, if you do want a tree in front of your home, please give us a call and we can add you to the fall planting list. Uh, I can be reached at 908-986-6100 or I can e be emailed at amedina at linden-nj.org. You can text me, email me, whatever, which, whichever, which way you like to reach out to me. That concludes my report. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Hickey. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Council President. I'm gonna start off with a few uh, committee reports from the clerk's office. The following licenses, permits, and transcripts issued in the city clerk's office during the month of June 2018 and fees received have been turned over to the municipal treasurer of the city of Linden. 91 um, birth, death, and marriage uh, transcripts, 31 marriage civil union licenses, 11 miscellaneous revenue, two bingo raffles, 103 vital statistics, and a total city revenue of $3,099.65 and a state revenue of $775 with a total amount of transactions of 238. The city's clerk's licensing division is submitting this monthly report for the month of May 2018. This, uh, the office issued 487 dog licenses and 37 miscellaneous licenses and collected $9,413. Again, that was for the month of May. For the month of June, the office issued 94 dog licenses and 86 miscellaneous licenses and collected a total amount of $4,325. On to our fire department. Um, my apologies, I know I'm to the chief and the fire department as chairwoman. Unfortunately, I had to go to work the other day and I know I missed a very, very beautiful ceremony. I truly tried to make everything. A uh, fellow employee um, had an emergency with her family, so I was unable to attend. Uh, from the ambulance reimbursement system, systems for the Linden Fire Department and Ambulance Building, the amount of $67,422.30 and 30 cents for June 2018 has been added to the total deposits. For the totaling for 2018 to be $439,204.65. <laughs> the Fire Prevention Bureau collected the following monies during the month of June. Uh, total monies collected were $9,398.95. On to my little report. By the, by the time I get to me, I, a lot of has been said and done already as a chairwoman of DPW and, and um, many other boards, engineering and so forth. So I know everybody gets to listen to them already, so I'm not gonna repeat all of them. Everyone knows they can reach me at any time through my phone, email, or social media. I do have from uh, Jeff Taniel, uh, Tandle, who is in charge of uh, Shade Tree Commission. Uh, he sent out an email that if you would like a tree planted in the fall, we need to have you uh, uh, send an email to your council person. Um, and the requests are due in by 2 p.m. on Wednesday, July 25th. The Shade Tree Commission and a few of their members have been out working hard and pruning trees and uh, certainly I found it very interesting with the knowledge that Jeff Tandle has uh, with the trees throughout the city, and I'm learning so much. Uh, engineer, engineering, uh, we are working on, as you can see, funds were passed last month and this month for uh, certain wards. We're on evens this year, because it's an even year, to be paved. Uh, hopefully next month, we'll pass the funding for the 10th ward. Um, my residents, too, are anxiously waiting, but you know we, we have to be fair to everyone. But in the 10th Ward, we will be having Princeton Road paved, Amherst, Verona from Amherst to Elmwood, Edgewood Road from Myrtle to Amherst, and also Forest Drive from the Clark border to Stile Street. I want to say thank you to George Verchik, who is retiring as of August 1st. Uh, his years of service are greatly appreciated his knowledge throughout the city and uh, regarding our engineering 
and infrastructure uh, has been really helpful to me through the years as I've been on council and you're surely going to be missed. However, I do wish you a very happy retirement with wonderful things happening in your life. And I'm ready. We have Joe Krobach as a, a backup right now who's really truly amazing too and has worked under George for a long time. So I can assure everyone that things will be moving smoothly. On July 20th through the 28th, the Linden Cultural Committee uh, will be having their summer play uh, hosted in the Linden High School Susan B. Hudak Auditorium. Uh, I have to express that over the years learning through the Cultural Committee, many people can't afford to attend a Broadway show. It's very, very expensive uh, for two, four people to go have lunch or dinner. Uh, the Cultural Committee puts on an amazing performance, and I have to say, extremely comparable to uh, a Broadway show. Uh, their talents uh, amongst the city and many members from the county are amazing. And if anybody has a night available, um, try to attend. Bring your children if you can. They will truly love it. Uh, this year's uh, play is Legally Blonde, so hopefully you can attend. On August 7th is nice National Night Out, which is always at the Promenade, which is always hosted by our police department. An amazing event. Everyone always attends. There's food, there's prizes. Uh, the policemen are there, all of our force and fire, everybody's there. All our first responders uh, to teach the kids and to meet and greet with them. And it's really important in today's society, I think, for the children to get to know uh, all of our first responders in our city. Uh, they mean a lot to me, and I know they mean a lot to others. Lastly, uh, Winfield Carnival is coming up soon. It is always a problem in the 10th Ward over the years. What I have done is about three or four of the blocks I've worked with, uh, I'll be working with Lieutenant Gunther in our traffic department. We always make sure what I do now is one side of the street parking just for the safety of all the residents, of the children, of the walkers. Uh, that go through the street. Many residents aren't very happy with the Winfield Carnival when it happens. Uh, it's only three days this year, and um, I just want to let my residents know I appreciate their patience, and I go there and check on everything every night. The garbage has been minimal. Uh, the Winfield Committee and Fire Department have been wonderful with helping to make sure everything runs smoothly. So. I just want to assure everybody, uh, and still, I hope you can get out and just stop by and support the Winfield Poli uh, Fire Department as well. And with that being said, I just um, want to wish everybody a nice uh, rest of their summer till next month. And uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mayor? Uh, yes, good evening, everybody. Um, don't have too much to report on this evening. Uh, with the exception of uh, next Monday, uh, the 23rd through the 27th, Linden will be hosting its first uh, Youth Police Academy. Uh, the times will be from 8 o'clock to 3 p.m. Uh, it's the first, um, and uh, we're looking for a nice turnout, and hopefully uh, the kids will get a, it's pre-registration required, and hopefully the children will get a, a, a better understanding of what it is uh, that our law enforcement does here in town and throughout the county. Um, also, I'd like to mention, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, the, that August 7th will be National Night Out, uh, uh, begin at 5 p.m. Uh, it will be hosted at the uh, Promenade, and it will also be, uh, Wood Avenue will also be closed from East Blanky Street to Knopf Street. So, uh, and again, not much to report on this evening. Most of the stuff that I was going to report on had been mentioned earlier, um, but I would like to uh, extend my well wishes to uh, George Verchek. Uh, as he retires, uh, George has worked for the city over 40 years. I've had the benefit of um, working with George uh, for the last 25 years, and I think um, uh, it's been a tremendous advantage uh, having guys like George. We had we've we had we've had a number of engineers who really understood our city very well, um, and George particularly worked under John Zemian, and he could tell you where almost every um, storm sewer, every mechanical, every every pipe that we had in this town, all the underground wiring. George was just very familiar with the uh, infrastructure of our city. Uh, and 
that works to our advantage as, as a governing body when you have a person as knowledgeable as George is. So again, I, I, I wish him well. I know he's going to enjoy his retirement. He's still a fairly young guy. Uh, so uh, George, uh, good, good luck and uh, thank you for all you've given to our city. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I need a motion to remove the resolution 2018-288 from consideration. Yes, Council President, I make the motion for the removal and ask for, uh, ask for uh, request a second for approval. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Abstain. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Public comments will be permitted for those specific resolutions to be removed from the consent approval. Please read the synopsis of the resolutions which have been prepared by the city clerk's office. Each is informative and self-explanatory. However, if you wish to address a specific resolution, the council will retain questions on it. Does anybody wish to remove a resolution from 286 through 298? Yes, sir. 289. 289. That's it. That's it. Ms. Cosby? 294. Mr. Principato? No, no, not remove them. Is yes. 286. Anybody else? Mrs. Minsky? 286. Anybody else? Okay. Can I have a motion for resolutions 282? I'm sorry. 286 through 298, including 282, for the exceptions of 288 that's been removed already, 289, 286, and 294? Yes, Council President. I make a motion for the approval for the approval of those, most, of those resolution and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? I abstain on resolution 296 and yes on the rest. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. I would like um, a motion to remove 282 from the table. Yeah. Can I have a motion to remove 282, please? Yes, Council President, I make a motion to remove resolution 2018-282. Request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Well, at the same time, let's have a motion to accept 282. Yes, Council President, I make a motion for the approval of Resolution 2018-282. Request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Uh, Mr. Halogen, right? Mr. Halogen, can you please come up? This is for resolution 289? Yes. 289, it refers to liens put on uh, property or premises by the, for work done by Department of Public Works and public property. Uh, what type of work and why would the city need to, uh, to put liens on property? Uh, can somebody explain this? Sure. The, the city. Uh, oh, well, no. Sorry, Mr. Bordek. Okay. The city goes out and does work sometimes because of issues like high grass, um, debris removal, et cetera. And it should be performed by the property owner. And it, when it's not, and it's an eyesore to the neighborhood, the city does it and then looks to be compensated by placing a lien on the property. 
Okay, I think that answers my questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have a motion for 289, please? Yes, Council President, I make a motion for 2018-289. I request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Councilwoman Cosby, 294. Um, 294, I actually had a, because um, there was no written communication that was sent to the clerk, it was sent to me. I wanted to know if I could read it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is a, a message sent from a professional cosmetologist, um, Avian Regan of Main Street. Um, why don't you explain what the resolution is first so people understand? Okay. So the resolution is recently, June 7th, there was a, two resolutions that one was assembly resolution this, this whole process started in April but really it started in 2015 where certain members of the assembly the state assembly wanted to create educational exemptions for people who do certain hairstyling services braiding for and this is about braiding and having my license since 1994 as a professional cosmetologist I disagree um, Councilman Javik also is a professional cosmetologist and he also disagrees insofar as there is no reason why you would allow someone to work on the general public without going to school and getting the basic education. So we want hopefully to pass this and send this to the governor as a statement that this should be vetoed and this should be sent back to the State Board of Cosmetology so they can consider adjusting any educational requirements. However, it's important that they have just the basics. like. If you go into a salon and you don't see a, a tall jar with blue water that's clear of fuzziness and, and particles, then you should probably turn around and leave because that means they're not practicing the basic sanitation. And so that's part of the thing. You go into a braid salon, not to take anything away from anybody, but you can't learn professionalism, you can't learn state rules, you can't learn salesmanship, you can't learn all of that um, through t tradition, which is what the law is saying. Just because I learned it as a little girl, I can go and I can charge you to do your hair in an unhealthy, hazardous manner. So that's what it's all about. And I have some people who are supporting this. And one lady sent me an email. Actually, there's a change.org petition as well out here so that we can get people, consumers, it's, it's mostly about the consumers, really. You know, because God forbid you should get lice or you should get some other head condition just because you went to a salon for cheap, to be honest, and they're using the same comb on everybody. So that's, that's what it's about. Okay. Yeah. And so Mrs. Regan sent this to me because she wasn't able to stay at the meeting and she wanted to just have it. She's in agreement with the resolution and she's hopeful that the resolution will pass and then she's actually gonna ask her uh, city council members in her city to actually do the same thing and send it to the governor Exempting certain persons from licensure as a hairstylist or cosmetologist. Obtaining licensure ensures that one is knowledgeable about requirements of cosmetology, including decontamination and infection control. Passing this bill would cause harm to the consumer because their safety would be at risk. Licensure would ensure that one has fulfilled those requirements and more. Interpersonal relationships, proper client consultation, scalp assessment, and more. None of these are found in the new burdensome, I'm sorry, None of these are burdensome based on what the uh, Senator Shirley Turner had stated um, is the reason why they put this forth, that it's burdensome for people, and I disagree. So I wanted to just say that. But again, we have to look out for ourselves as consumers. And uh, so this is a sister to another ordinance that we have on for introduction tonight, also looking out for our consumers here in London who patronize um, you know, places of personal service. So that's the one for introduction tonight as well, courtesy of Councilman Javik. So that's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman. Can I have a motion, please? Uh, yes, Council President, I'll make, make a motion for the approval of 2018-294 and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Presipato, can you please come up for 286? <clears throat> I 
I think this is a great idea. Okay, thank you, sir. Having been a oh, more? former city employee. I think you get to the point. Well, no, I think it's a great idea of having been a former city employee and uh, being in and out of city buildings and rooms in certain city buildings where lights are left on for quite a long time. And I don't know what the the costs are or what the bills are for uh, electric, but I'm sure it's exorbitant. And uh, I just want to say that it's a good idea and that it, it doesn't cost us anything is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Zeminski. Hello again. Uh, yeah, didn't we do something like this a couple of years ago? And what's the reason for putting, if so, what's the reason for putting this resolution? Is it changing the vendor? And the last point I'd like to make, it might make sense to, um, obviously, you know, you have to look at this by itself, but at the end of the day, can I think about this again holistically? I know there's been some initiatives and some resolutions regarding um, solar panels, looking what to do with the old dump site. I think this is a nice tie-in, so to see maybe what the city can leverage in terms of uh, cost savings there. Thank you, Mr. Zeminski. Mr. Borg, you have any comments on this? Yes. We, we have done this oftentimes. There are companies out there that come in and look at our usage uh, in terms of our tariffs and stuff that we're paying and that we're paying the correct rates for the electric that we're, we are using. Um, they come in, their hope is that they will find a mistake and then um, share in cost savings that result. Um, so that's how they get paid. Um, but we've done it several times over the years with different companies. Can I have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'll make a motion for 2018-286 and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this point, I'm going to have uh, the clerk, Mr. Bodek, read a resolution that was turned in late by Mr. Antonelli. Uh, so, Mr. Bodek, can you please read uh, what number would that be? 2018-299. Resolution for approval to submit a grant application at no cost to the city to conduct design, engineering, and logistical studies to establish a roll-on, roll-off marine and connecting rail freight service. Whereas the city of Linden, due to its location, is inundated with traffic congestion from trucks moving freight in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area. And whereas grant monies are available to conduct design, engineering, and logistical studies to establish a roll-on, roll-off marine and connecting rail freight service, which will reduce the amount of traffic congestion caused by trucks. And whereas the grant application will be submitted at no cost to the city, now therefore be resolved by the City Council of the City of Linden, formally gives permission to New Jersey Harborside Transport LLC to submit a grant for the above stated project, and be it further resolved that the Mayor and Council, uh, the Mayor and City Clerk are hereby authorized to sign the grant agreement on behalf of the City of Linden, and that their signatures constitutes acceptance of the terms and conditions of the grant agreement and approve the execution of the grant agreement. Any questions or comments? May I have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, make a motion for approval of Resolution 2018-299 and request a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, we're moving with ordinances on first reading. I will have the deputy clerk read it on this entirely. Can you please start with 62-56? An ordinance to adopt the amended and restated redevelopment plan entitled Linden Airport Development Area, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, NJSA 40A colon 12A-1 at sequence. Anybody wish to make a comment? There will be no questions, just comments. 
Mr. Principato? You want to make a comment? 56. John Principato, 1706 Westover Road. Is this the property that No question, sir. Oh, Just okay. make your comments. Okay. Um, this project was sold as a commercial piece of property at a commercial rate. It's being changed from what I've been told. It's been rezoned to residential. The rate of the sale didn't change. So in essence, from what I'm hearing, 27 units at the going rate anywhere between 35 and 40,000 per unit, we're losing approximately $645,000. The city is losing on just the sale. Then this supposedly is going to be a pilot program from what I'm hearing also. We're gonna be losing taxes. So what happened now is the city created a value of this property by changing the zoning of 645,000 more. So they made the property worth 645,000 more. In essence, losing $645,000. Because anywhere else that property, if that property is anywhere else as a, a residential, that's how much they're gonna get. So my, my concern is that there are a lot of developers that would have paid that 645,000 had they known it was going to be sold as a residential property or changed to a residential property. As council people, you can't in good faith vote for this to go through without having someone come in and do an independent appraisal of that property. If you do that, you're breaching your oath, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion. You're breaching your oath as council people to have the best interests of the taxpayer in mind, okay? So I'm almost pleading with you to not let this go through the way it is. The tax break for the pilot program is gonna cost the taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars a year for how many years? A minimum of 10 years, I believe. So that's another That's hundreds of thousands of dollars that we're gonna lose. So please think about this very carefully because there's a, there are a lot of people that are looking at this resolution or, or this ordinance and they're saying that it just doesn't, it doesn't smell right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? At this time, I would like a motion to introduce 6256. 6256 and ask for a second. Second. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Before I vote, um, I have a comment here. This property is, as Mr. Principato said, next to, over near the airport. You had 27 units. Um, we're grossly selling it 
for a lot cheaper and it's because it's being rezoned. Um, it could be worth a lot more, but that's not my problem. My gripe here is that it's going to have a pilot program, payment in lieu of taxes. So you're going to know the developer, whoever he is, we all know who he is, is going to be able to know what he's going to pay over the 20 year pilot or whatnot. So his first year, he's only going to pay four, actually almost the first 10 years, he's only paying 40, in between 40, 45, and 50 thousand dollars. I don't know about you, my, my mom and dad pay about nine, nine five for their house alone. This developer gets 27 units for about $40,000 the first year, the first couple of years. Comes out to about $1,400 per unit. It's a pretty sweet deal. And then you gripe in the fact that payment lieu of taxes, pilot programs, they don't go into the Board of Education. 5% goes to the county by state law. The rest goes to the city directly to us. The Board of Education doesn't get any of that. So as soon as you put three kids if it costs $16,000 a year to educate a child, as soon as you put three children in that building, we're, we're at a loss. Or at least the board is at a loss. You know, school too is gonna have to add classrooms, add teachers. I mean, are they thinking about this at all? I vote no. Council President, I'd like to make a comment since no, it's sir. open for comment. No, sir. Strano? Yeah, I'd like to make some comments about this ordinance uh, because um, I guess I've been a councilman for 15 of the last 20 some odd years. Uh, and going back to the um, amount of time that went by where this property produced a big fat zero. I love to hear the Johnny come lately's come in here and tell us how we don't know what we're doing and that we're wrong and we're finally putting this property which is costing us money has been costing us money for those last 20 some odd years because we have to maintain it it's an eyesore it's always it has to be clean because of the uh, it is our property it does not belong to the um, uh, to the, uh, the the mall um, proprietors or the property maintenance people there, it's our responsibility. As a matter of fact, just recently, a uh, contractor doing paving work in the parking lot decided that that was uh, available to them to uh, stockpile their uh, materials. You know, and uh, I see this as a way to get a piece of property that was not attractive to anyone. Nobody else came to the forefront to uh, bid on this property. so. With that being said, I say we're moving in the right direction, and I'm voting yes. Yamakaitis? I would like to also state I agree with uh, Councilman Strano. This property has been vacant for since the development of that airport. Um, we have been losing money on this year after year. Therefore, I think this is time to move this forward. I am voting yes. Medina? You know, I'll make a quick comment. You know, again, I, I personally don't like to see empty lots, uh, plot of land around Linden. I like to see properties developed and bring in tax revenue. This ordinance is for introduction, so a lot of things can change between now and next month. So I would like to see how uh, how this moves forward and see what is what comes to the table next month. So uh, I vote yes. Thank you. Hickey. Well, you know, I have a comment, and thank you, Mr. Principato, for coming up here. Since the, day this, um, since the day this has been on the agenda with the purchase of the property for $300,000, um, I have talked about it and it has been an issue and a very, very sweet deal. In fact, as soon as the uh, request for qualifications was closed, that same day we had a caucus meeting and I had a redeveloper who offered $400,000 for the property. The thing you need to know is that this property was zoned for a banquet hall. And yes, we all want to see our property developed, but it can't keep be being given away. It's constant and I don't know if it's somebody's friend, but I have to tell you as a councilwoman, Every single redevelopment deal that goes up in, on this agenda every single month 
makes me almost sick to come to the meetings because I have to make a decision and I don't know who to believe and who not to believe. So now this property, it's trickery because it's being rezoned. It's being rezoned for two apartment buildings with 27 units each. Last night when I brought this all up again, I was told, well, you vote on pilot programs before. Yes. When we initially started pilot programs and are supposed to be developing a beautiful transit village, yes, I'm voting yes for those. We needed to bring, uh, we needed to bring things into our city. When we have big industry that uh, needs a pilot program, I'm for that too. But it's getting to the point, when do we stop giving everything away? You know, $300,000 for a piece of property that's going to be 27 units and has, you know, sneakingly be, been rezoned is just not right. And I, I'm, I also was told last night when I made this comment by another councilman who, you know, was making fun of people saying, Johnny, come lately. Uh, and when I made my remarks regarding this, because we all are entitled to our opinions, uh, he talked across the table to the other council members and said, take it from the source. Yes, please, take it from the source. Because you know what? My sources are very good, and this is just not right for our city. And I voted no also for the East St. George Avenue property as well, because I don't agree with that. Our children in our school systems cost eighteen to $20,000 a piece. Who is going to, to uh, take these costs upon us, the taxpayers, all the taxpayers. I'm up to over $11,000 in my home. I can't afford it anymore. You know, I have children in college. Who can afford it anymore? Our employees can't afford to live here. So let's keep giving everything away. I vote no. Council President, I'd like Count to make your comment. No. I think it's only can right. This is for a vote only. But everybody else made a comment. I don't understand Ms. why. Ms. can you please continue? Mr. Alvarez. I will abstain on this. So Ms. Holden, can you please read 62-57? An ordinance to adopt a redevelopment plan entitled Block 437, Lots 5.03 and 5.04, Route 1 and 9 and Willow Glade Road, pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 40A, colon 12A-1 at sequence. Does anybody want to make a comment? No questions on this. Mr. Principato, come up. <clears throat> John Principato, 1706 West Over Road. Johnny Come Lately says, hopefully there's no pilot program on this one too. Anybody else? Ms. Hunnan, can you call the roll, please? I need a motion. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Can I have a, a motion to introduce? Make a motion for introduction of Ordinance 62 dash, what are, where are we at? 57. Uh, 57, ask for a second. Second. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Roman? I'm going to be brief and, and less dramatic this time. Um, I'm, I'm, Wills Glade Road is in my ward. It's messy, it's trashy. There's, we always have a trash problem there. I would really like to see this redeveloped. At the same time, Councilman Medina brought up a very good point in caucus yesterday about more trucks coming down Linden Ave, getting stuck on one, there's only one and nine south or, or Linden Ave they can use right there. Um, but this is on introduction and I think that we should see where it goes, so I'm gonna vote yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Quick comment, again, just like Councilman Roman mentioned, I am concerned about this one as well, but again, as for introduction, I would like to see some site plans and what they actually plan on doing with that property. And I vote yes, thank you. Hickey? Agree with Councilman Medina, vote yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hunter, can you please read 6258? An ordinance to adopt a redevelopment plan entitled Route 1 and Style Street, Block 469, Lots 33.01, 34, 35.01 and 36.01 pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law NJSA 40A colon A, I'm sorry, colon 12A dash one at sequence. Does anybody want to make any comments? No questions. 
May I have a motion, please? I make a motion for the introduction of Ordinance 62-59, asked for a second. 58. 58. 58. 58, sorry. Second. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Ms. Cosby is still absent. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? No. Ms. Sor Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hunan, can you please read 6259? <laughs> an ordinance to amend and supplement chapter 31 zoning of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden 1999 passed November 23rd 1999 and approved November 24th 1999 and as amended and supplemented revised 31-20.25 prohibited uses anybody wants to make a comment no questions May I have a motion to introduce, please? Make a motion for introduction to 62-59 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hunter, can you please read 6260? An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance establishing the schedule of title salary ranges and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the city of Linden passed August 15, 1995 and approved August 16, 1995, adding salary schedule 4MM6. Does anybody wish to make a comment? In that case, may I have a motion, please? Council President, a move. Ordinance 62-60 for introduction or request a second? Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hunter, can you please read 6261? An ordinance amending the redevelopment plan for the Southwood Avenue redevelopment project and referring same to the planning board for review and comment pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law NJSA 40A colon 12A dash one at sequence. Does anybody want to make any comments? May I have a motion please to introduce? Make a motion for the introduction of the ordinance 62 61 after a second. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hunter, can you please read 6262? An ordinance to create a new chapter entitled Barbershops, Beauty Salons, and Nail Salons. Does anybody want to make a comment? May I have a motion? I want to make a comment. Make a comment. Oh. I'm very excited about this one. So I want to thank Councilman Javik for doing all the research and getting all the necessary information from the state and putting this one on for introduction. And I'm looking forward to professional services being conducted in our city and looking forward to enforcement and partnering with the state of New Jersey State Board of Cosmetology to make sure that every establishment is licensed and there's either a student or a professional licensed person working. So thank you. Good job. Thank you. Anybody else? May I have a motion to introduce, please? Uh, Council President, I move for introduction of ordinance number 6262 and he asked for a second. Second. Javik? Yes. Brown? Before I like to vote, I'd like to make a comment like everybody else. Yes, everybody okay. else did. Thank you. you. I'm voting no right now because I don't see where the numbers are as far as where do we have the personnel to enforce this? We have a lot of enforcement issues throughout the city that residents throughout the city come up and you come up to the dais and talk to us about enforcement, this, 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 this. This is just another layer where I don't see where we have the personnel nor the funds to do this. And until I see a plan, I'm voting no. Good. You know, the research hasn't been provided to the council. I haven't seen any numbers. So right now, I'm voting no. Cosby? Well, I will volunteer to do inspections if that's permissible by the law so that there's no, no question about inspections. And I am qualified in my own opinion, having been licensed for so very long, and I'm voting yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. 
Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this, <laughs> at this time, we're going with public comments. No personal pol political or derogatory comments. It will not exceed five minutes. At the five minute point, I will uh, cut you off and let you know. So let's start with Mr. Halloran, please. Yes, Craig Halloran, 120 Donaldson Place. My question is, again, the second time at a council meeting. I had proposed ideas for uh, like resident parking permits on my street. Uh, this was quite a while ago. I haven't heard anything uh, about it. Uh, I also suggest that I believe the last council meeting that a ordinance be put forth or introduced, whatever, uh, that when a house is abandoned, such as a house right in my neighborhood, uh, that the owners notify the town, whether that be the mortgage holder or somebody, and I don't hear any comments from the city council or anybody on these ideas. Does it take that long for the city council to act on a pu public comment to this effect? Uh, other than that, I would like to report that on this abandoned house, they are doing work, and I know that uh, they're doing it under permit from the town on the house that I'm discussing, which is 597 West Price Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are doing a lot of work, so I mean that's a plus to the town. You know, or just, I apologize to the city, and you know, I'd like some comments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kaminsky. Hey, Kaminsky, Maple Avenue. Good evening, once again. Um, can't help but to get disappointed every month that it really things just devolve into name calling I mean again it's just disappointing and I ask folks just to refrain I mean everybody has I think the interest of Linden at hand continue to move forward in that and quite frankly uh, Mr. Roman hit on something there um, these arguments especially with regard with regards to the developments can easily be analyzed I, I don't hear any numbers but any um, you know, rebuke to any assertions can be done from a simple cost-benefit analysis. Because as someone that's been in the business world that has priced business for 20 some odd years, there is bad business. <laughs> and uh, I've been a part of companies that have jettisoned divisions and the bad business. So although we are all anxious to see areas be rede redeveloped, it has to be the right development at the right price and not a giveaway. I'll leave my comments there. Um, that being said, we have in about a, a half mile to three quarter mile radius, a uh, quick back of the napkin math, uh, close to a thousand units coming on uh, in the coming years if everything goes through. We are already choking at the seams. Um, and even with the, uh, the building going up right now by the train station, uh, the Meridia 2, um, you know, there's, there's going to be businesses all on the first floor goes back to parking. There is a, a dearth of parking in town. So being off for several weeks, um, I'm really kind of getting out in the neighborhood, you know, trying to get more active, uh, that the weather's been pretty decent. So uh, I just want to bring it to the attention. Um, maybe these things have been looked at, but nonetheless, I'll put it out there to look at in terms of parking. Uh, there are spots, uh, and at the end of the day, just again, do uh, my quick analysis and looking, not being overly aggressive, uh, you know, I found about 20 spots that were just kind of sitting there. And that doesn't even count the whole lot behind where the Dairy Queen and Two Tonys are. Uh, my, my understanding is that used to be public parking, but it's not anymore. So it's a whole bunch of spots there that I know I used to use that have gone away. That being said, there's spots, uh, could be spots across from Big Blues um, uh, on the side and in front of the, the first Meridia building. Price Street by the Pulaski lot in the back there. Munsell Avenue, I see this by schools as well, um, where uh, in this case the fire department has spots blocked off on the street. I think that is unfair, especially it's a relatively new building. Um, it's right alongside the Verizon building. Maybe some kind of deal um, can be done with the Verizon folks. I never see that lot filled. Or there's a just a grass lot behind that. Maybe the SID, the SID could look into buying that and making a lot there. Um, 
pedestrian uh, safety too. I've seen a lot of near misses. I see people just running out there. Brought this up several years ago, but maybe as we're talking with New Jersey Transit, we could talk about uh, you know egresses from the platform to the opposite side of Wood Avenue. Um, on the northbound side, that's all locked and loaded. You just basically have to extend, even maybe with like a metal grate stairwell that's there. On the southbound side, that gets a little bit trickier, but nonetheless, I think it bodes to have those discussions with New Jersey Transit and whoever else needs to, to make sure people get off at least uh, one landing safely. Um, there's a lot of talk about trees today too, and initially, again, in, in my walks around the city uh, over the last several weeks, I've, I've put some notes here. Um, one thing that stood out to me, there are large swaths of linden, main drags of linden that are lacking in trees. I mean, I play ball in Rahway every week, and as I go there in the morning, it's kind of peaceful. You get to kind of soak in the nature around you, and you could, you could literally tell when you cross into Rahway because it has trees up to the linden up to you know the linden side it doesn't so certainly st george avenue literally from rawway to elizabeth especially as we have new developments going on there you know definitely some trees there roselle street is lacking and some areas certainly of, of, of wood avenue especially across route one i think we, we could do better to at the end of the day beautify our town and this cuts across many wards thank you thank you sir mr principato John Principata, 1706 Westover Road. Um, again, I'm going to talk about the price per unit we're giving away these properties at. And I think that someone, for someone who's been on council so long, um, I'm not going to name any names comment was made by the council person you should be able to look at these projects and say we need to get more money from that project or why don't we, we before we put it out for bid because it's been sitting so long why don't we rezone it maybe we can get more money for it maybe get a professional to put a plan together because when you say things like I've been here for so many years and things keep going down when property values are going up you're giving away properties for nothing it makes you look foolish you know I'm not an expert and I don't have a PhD, but I have common sense. And common sense tells me that if we're not getting what we should be getting, I'm gonna go to professional and say, what do we do? What should we get? How can we change things to get more money, to get more value? I'd like the councilman of the seventh ward to take take a ride through the seventh ward. I do it every day from the turnpike over the turnpike, back over, in by Bertram against the turnpike. I see I bet you right now I'm 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 gonna take a ride right after this and I'm gonna count the shopping carts that are hanging out on Style Street. Jack Sheehy used to go around and pick up shopping carts with his own vehicle. Remember that? I'm getting ready to do it myself, only because I have a business in the seventh ward and it makes me ill. And that property you're talking about, what we've been talking about, has a lot of them on there. The contractor wasn't using that property. The contractor was using the easement or driveway to drop their material, which they have every right to do because I know the contractor. And they, they actually store their salt on the back of that property too. And that's where they're putting their construction debris. That's all from that property, from the airport property. 
not the lot. So I'd like you to take a ride with me, Councilman Strano, so I can show you. I already have the pictures on my phone, but I'd like to show you your ward. It's deplorable in certain areas. Maybe you don't know it, but I'd like to show you. And I'll be that Johnny come lately. Think about it. We don't need pilot programs in Linden. We have a train station. I've said this many times. It's desirable. Very desirable property here. We don't need to give anything away. Think about it. Every time we give something away, what does it do for us? Our taxes go up. My taxes are ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's what my taxes are. It's a joke. The amount of money I pay in taxes for my home. It's insane. Council people can't even afford their taxes. Council, councilwoman said it. She's, she can't even afford her taxes anymore. But let's keep giving stuff away. Come on, it's common sense. Thank you. Excuse me. Sir, you're out of order, sir. Wait for your turn. Is uh, Ms. Avian Reagan still here? Yes, All right. Ms. Twaddle? Elise Twaddle, 438 Larita Street, Linden. I have a few questions and a few comments. First, I'd like to know what happened to those pretty hanging planters we were gonna get from the light poles. I believe we have Linden Uptown Incorporated signs on every pole up and down Wood Avenue. So thank you for that summer beautification program. I appreciate it very much as a taxpayer to the city. Second, my comment is I would like to thank Mr. Javik. We had a storm. Um, I reached out to Mr. Bodak um, and Mr. Javik to let them know that there was a dangerous branch hanging. Um, it did take a few days, but it was taken care of. But here's my comment and question. I appreciate that it was taken care of, but Mr. Dan, if the branch is broken and hanging right above a car and the rest of the branches around are ready to go, why didn't they trim the rest of that tree when they were taking that branch down? They were there. So now on the next block, there's more broken branches that are hanging down. I'm on Loretta Street. I know you're short staffed, but if they were there to fix an issue, it would have been the same amount of time to cut the branches that are hanging over the street that are gonna cause more trouble. So just as a citizen, and as a boss, if you would tell these guys, hey, if you see something, maybe it's easier to take care of it at the same time than going back out again for a second call because it will break because of the way it is structured over the street and everything. So toward the AA field, there is more branches on Loretta Street that are hanging over the cars. Um, also with the beautification, um, I, rode down Wood Avenue the other day and you know certain things capture your attention as you enter this city. I grew up here, I'm here 54 years and I grew up across the street from school number one on Gibbon Street and on the corner of Gibbon Street there's a beautiful memorial park with a beautiful memorial and that beautiful clock and it's an embarrassment Everything is overgrown over the monument, over the sidewalk. It, you can't even see what belongs there because it's so overgrown. I know we're short staffed, but certain things like these places should be priority for our city so that when somebody from another town comes in, Mr. Strano, am I boring you? <laughs> It, it's important, this memorial, and I know you're, you have- That's the Board of Education property. Hang on. Okay. Councilman. I, the Board of Education, pro, I've been hearing, it's the Board of Ed property, 
but the Board of Ed would never put up a memorial for veterans. It's, it's an incorporation. This is something that we see as soon as we drive into our town. So if it's a Board of Ed that goes behind the memorial and the city that goes in front of the memorial, we really need to straighten it out and not fight about it because it looks disgusting. Now, having said that, I'm here to also give some other information with Mr. Vercheck retiring. I wish him all the best. Um, I know Mr. Krobach is an amazing worker as well. I wanted to let everybody know that if you are unaware, Mr. Vercheck did the CDBG grants. A lot of your road money comes from these CDBG grants and Armando can back me on this. I've spoken to Councilwoman Cosby last year and let her know that there is money for John Street. There is money for the senior programming at the Recreation Center. There's money to bring people in to do ceramics. There's money to bring people in to do nursing. There's money to bring people in to give health talks. You have to apply for it. The applications come out September and they are due December. I want you to mark your calendars as council people, mayor, CDBG grant money. It's free money. You just apply. The applications go in, they go before a panel, and the panel makes a decision. You might not get $10,000 for each project. You might get $6,000 for each project. But if you put it in and it meets the guidelines of the community development block grant program, you will get that money. That's how a lot of your streets have been fixed. Well, a portion of your streets have been fixed. They have to fall within the guidelines. I thank everybody for your time, and I hope you will consider my requests. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Plato. Mr. Mack? No, this, this is public comments. This is public comments. Oh, this is public comments? Oh, thank you. Can you get behind the microphone? Files don't tell me. Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, City Council, Member of Council, thank you so much. But the first thing I want to do tonight on behalf of the people, the city clerk of the city of London, I want to congratulate and personally thank the city clerk. I think his name is, what's his name? Joe, what's your name? <laughs> Mr. Bodick, I want to thank his staff. They are so wonderful. They are so wonderful. Uh, uh, Mr. President of the Council, please don't start the clock. I asked for legal counsel, and he have gave me legal advice as long as I do not go over the boundary line to deal with this thing personal. According to legal counsel, he have already advised me. I have already spoke to the captain, the chief of police, that if I don't go over the boundary line, I'm putting anyone personally involved. Don't start the clock. Start the clock. <laughs> I started the clock a minute ago. I asked you not to start the clock, so that's oh. why. I, so you, you want specific rules for yourself, sir? No, I'm not asking for that. Sir. I humble myself. I respectfully ask you. I have no intention. I just continue, sir. Rules. Continue. I just wanted to make sure that I had enough time to bring to your attention and the mayor attention what they, the people, I didn't say it, the people told me right. to tell the people. And I just wanted to make sure that we didn't start the clock because I have had a very serious problem with you for years <clears throat> over the fact that you have cut my time frame and I can't tell you what the people said. Okay. And my point to be here today is to tell you what the people said. I don't have no interest in the agenda tonight. That's why I even look at it. I looked at it, but I had no intention. Of it. I want to talk to you, to the mayor. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to the city council on behalf of the people. With your permission, with the mayor's permission, and with your permission, I want to talk to you guys on behalf of the people that sent me. They, I, I, didn't call, I didn't ask them to send me up here. 
They asked me, will I do it? Now you can start the clock. Can Sir, please speak. Thank you kindly. Mr. Mayor, President, City Council, Chief of Police, and on his representatives tonight, and members of you, I respectfully appear before you honorable people. I said honorable, because y'all have been good to me. And I want to say on behalf of George Bukowski, <laughs> Mayor DeGorio, my people, that raised me. I want to be, that's why I want to be on the record. My position, why do y'all think I'm so hard on y'all? Because George Fakowski raised me and taught me. And I have no intention on changing the policy of John DeGorio. I have no intention on change the policy. No intention on change the policy of the president that's sitting that year as president of city council. Mikowski, you got to be out of your mind. <coughs> and I mean it. And I mean it. The people told me to tell you, you, Mr. President of city council, you need to break your system down. I heard what I heard some of the people say. If I'm in the fourth ward, if I got a problem in the fourth ward, ain't got no business in the mayor's office with the fourth ward. I got a problem with the councilman of the fourth ward. It must be further acknowledged. I want to thank the mayor. <laughs> I went to the mayor's office and the mayor office was so generous and so kind to me because they returned my phone calls. The mayor returned my phone calls. Maybe he didn't do it, but he had his office to do it. And I'm talking to this, I'm talking, you know, you know who you did call me. I call you, if I call a city council member, watch the language now, and you didn't call me back. The people told me to tell you. I didn't call you. Because I wanted to call you, because I had no intention on talking to you. The people told me, call my, I saw, I, I, Peter Brown, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mack. Your time is up. Huh? We'll talk after me. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Why did you do that, counsel? I asked you when I started not to do it. Mr. Mack, when no, I, no further questions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sierra. Mr. Mayor, President Council, Council Members, Mr. Israel Sierra, Tamboy Avenue. Linda, first time up here. Didn't need to be, being that I had so many conversations with representatives of Linden that I love so much. I congratulate every single one of you guys. I mean, you really tolerate a lot. But there's a lot of experts out here that are not doing that much either as far as complaining about and complaining about this. I walk the city every day. <laughs> Up and down Wood Avenue, most of your wards. I see things. But one of the things I see and I care most is about my veteran brothers. It saddens me to say that I had spoken with the representatives of a particular count, uh, ward yet nothing's being done. Now, years have gone by. I mean, I, I only got five minutes, so I hope I can just put it in simple words. There's a monument called Farewell, George Farewell. Colleague, gave his life. 
Yet, I pass by every Memorial Day and I see our council representatives, uh, BFWs, our residents, and they go and salute it wholeheartedly. I do it every time. I also visit the Vietnam Memorial, which is pretty. It's out front decorating our city house. But when I go to Farewell Park, I get sad. Then I speak to the people who represent the ward, and they promise and promise. So the guys say, Izzy, time has come. You got to go let them know and remind them that this is why we elect you. This is why we put you where you are right now, because you're experts. If you're not, you become experts, or you try to be, to help sell our beautiful city. I know the concerns, security, wonderful. I, hear, I even hear that they got trees to give away. I need a tree there that, that came down because of certain, I guess, Mother Nature or maybe some truck. However, the monument is in decay. For those of you who probably have noticed or maybe who have never visited, I have pictures. If you'd like to see them, I'll show you. My concern is for my brotherhood, for my veterans. And when we get a monument and we get a memory of something, we want it to be nice. I want to go there and I'm going to salute my flag and I want to look at George's monument after I visit the Vietnam Memorial that we have. Please, I'm pleading, I'm asking to whoever it is, because I'm not going to point who Gush Department is responsible or what. If somebody is not responsible, then please let me know and maybe I'll get a fundraiser going to have it fixed, because today you got bricks that make look nice instead of wood. You could put artificial turf on the square palm out of it. When that flag hangs up there and the tree that was there goes back, then I think my brother George will probably be happy. Just like every other monument, I heard a young lady speak before. Whatever monuments are up there, I think we have enough personnel that can handle it. And it doesn't take a month, it doesn't take five years. I really, but I really thank the public workers of the city because they do a hard job, but sometimes your hands are tied. You gotta start loosening up on these hands and let these people go to work. Another issue besides the monument is because I'm a Lindianite and I love Linden and people are selling Linden the wrong way. You want to put building. You want to make it look beautiful. What about the infrastructure? What about the city? What about John Street? What about the kids who have no recreation? What about the parks? I visit the same park at Farewell's Memorial. You think I'll take my three-year-old to play there? My grandson? Your grandson? You think you want to take him there? Sometimes, because as a council representative, as a, as a ward representative, I think you should just take a walk and look. Just look, don't let nobody tell you nothing because we elect you to represent each one at each ward. And I know you guys work together and I know you guys struggle. Some, some people fight up against each other. I give props because it's difficult, it's not easy to understand government, to understand law, to understand our taxpayers. All we get to do is pay, pay, pay. And we get nothing. We're getting nothing. I don't know about anybody else, but there's nothing. You walk around the streets, it's supposed to be beautiful. Wood Avenue, what a beautiful complex. What about issue, what security? The chief of police works hard, but there's something missing. Mrs. Sierra, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I would ask for extended, but I'm short. But I'll get you next time. Mr. Mack, you're out of order right now. But what's the matter? Okay, so we will look into it. Public work, the superintendent of public work, that we stand in my conversation with public work and uh, the staff of public work. Thank you, sir. That we got in okay, thank right? you. But the bottom line is, I, I have a very serious problem with, with, with 
Mr. Mack, we'll talk later. Thank you, sir. I need a motion to get out of the uh, public comments. So motion. moved. Second. Mr. Javik. Yes. Brown. Yes. Cosby. Yes. Roman. Aye. Strano. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Anybody wants a minute? Anybody else? All right, that's it. Uh, Mr. Brown, Councilman Brown. All right, I'm gonna talk about it more next month, but I try to talk it early, so be as quickly as possible. John was here and Eddie here. I'm gonna combine you guys' to comments. Yes, you're right, we should look at the numbers, and we do. You know, the comments that are made by council members here, the same ones that are made yesterday, or new ones, and on Mondays, we have discussions where professionals come and talk to us. So us giving the land away for free is completely nonsense. Now, with that being said, the pilot program, I, we talk about dollars and cents. I'm the only one here in council that's showing you guys there's a report that's done by our professionals. And you want to know the numbers is that at first they came with a pilot program for 20 years instead of 30 years. We normally give 30 years. There's people in the diocese here to vote for 30-year pilots. This is a 20-year pilot where at first the developer came us for 10 percent. However, it's negotiated back that the pilot program over 20 years would give us actually 12 percent. Therefore, the option between the, um, option one and option two, what was originally agreed upon and what was negotiated is an increase of $371,000. No one here is talking about that, but it's the rhetoric Councilman. that's being put out there that's untrue. Thank you. Who wants to see the report is here. Councilwoman Cosby. Okay. So just really briefly, uh, Ms. Twaddle did come to me and she approached me about the van. We have the senior in motion van. And she said, hey, you know, the city can get this money to pay the driver's salary because there were some issues with getting a driver part-time, blah, 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 whatever. And there was no interest at the time by the management. So hopefully now under recreation that people can actually take a, a better and a harder interest and getting the grant money. We've missed so many grant opportunities over the years that it's just ridiculous because nobody wants to do the work. And um, Izzy, thank you. I, you showed me the memorial on Memorial Day and you know, I, I see what you're talking about and I, I feel what you're saying and thank you. And not for nothing that we're all up here because the residents voted for us and they expect certain things from us. and and. You know, we do this twice a month, but we have a job to do on a daily basis in the streets. So, like, I, I do walk the ward, I ride the ward, but some people don't. And then when you call them and tell them there's an issue, well, that's my neighborhood, why are you getting a phone call? Well, we gotta call our residents back, so we just gotta do what we're supposed to do while we're here. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Medina. Thank you, Council President. Real brief, I felt to um, congratulate uh, Councilman Brown on uh, his new addition to his family, so congratulations. Uh, with that said, I um, <clears throat> also ask folks just to keep the families, uh, uh, the four little ones that were lost in Union City in their prayers, and also just check your smoke detector, carbon dioxide detector, because that was just a terrible tra tragedy in Union City for those four little ones, and it breaks my heart. So, oh, it's five, excuse me, the latest one did pass away, I believe, today. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. The following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting Monday, August 20th, 2018 at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Council conference meeting prior to the council meeting, Tuesday, August 21st, 2018 at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Council meeting Tuesday, August 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the council chambers, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Aye. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. I think you have to go to. We're adjourned.